Hello drummers, Gary Williams back. Now we're gonna to go to the second of the seven essential rudiments. This is called the multiple bounce roll. Sometimes it's called the buzz roll. I've heard it described as the crush roll. And in college, we sometimes refer to it as the orchestral roll. It's the kind of role that the snare drummer will play in concert band in high school, and of course the percussionist in the symphony orchestra. So this one involves holding the stick in a particular fashion to where by which if you squeeze it, press down, you're going to gain a number of rebound strokes. There's various grips that can be used to produce this, but the simplest of all two grips is just a two-finger grip. And what I'm going to be doing is placing my thumb at the balance point or fulcrum of the drumstick. And that's generally about where the flag is on the Vic Burst sticks. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to form a box with my index finger. So three sides of the box are both sides of my index finger. I'm going to place my thumb in that fourth side of the box. Now in the natural grip position, if I'm holding the stick just gently through my hand, it's going to be about a 45 degree angle with the tip of the stick pointing toward the center of the drum and the back end of the stick is going to be on the outside of my hand. Now if I hold up my hand to show you where the stick is in relationship to my fingers, of course it's underneath my fingers. Now as I move the stick into this position, similar to the finger control stroke technique, I'm using just the tip of my index finger to press up and pinch, literally, the drumstick. So I'm pinching my thumb inward toward my index finger. At the same time, I'm pinching my stick up toward my hand. So by holding it at the balance point, sliding my hand back down to where about the flag is, aligning the tip of my index finger on the bottom of the drumstick, in this fashion, I'm holding the stick where if I place my hand close to the drum head, squeeze tightly and press down, I get a series of bounce strokes. Now I'm demonstrating this on the snare drum. Here's the sound of the stroke on a practice pad. You can still hear the buzzing sensation. Now I like to experiment with changing the amount of density. In other words, how tight or loose the buzz is. Okay, so by squeezing extremely tightly, I can almost make a single stroke. And as I continue to relax, you can hear what's happening. I can even loosen it up to the point where it's gargle and then rapid drops of water. So just by experimenting with dropping and then finally gently squeezing as I hold the stick, force it into the pad, I'm creating a finer grain texture to the rebound stroke. And I can go to the extreme where it's too much of a good thing. So I have to experiment. So somewhere in there is pretty good. So with my other hand, I'm just going to match that same formation. Again, trying to make sure that I get that index finger tip right on the bottom of the stick. You may notice that the back of the stick's really underneath my thumb muscle instead of through my hand. So in this position I can really dictate how much rebound. Your index finger is your accelerator, so the tighter you squeeze it, the faster the bounces. The looser you squeeze it, the more coarse ground the bounces are. So if I start slowly with real coarse ground bounces and then increase my speed and then at the same time gently squeeze tighter, I can reach a steady rate of speed to achieve a pretty smooth sounding roll, even on a pad. So here's a demonstration on the pad. Now normally I wouldn't play something quite that slow very often. Occasionally I do for a musical effect. Generally I'm trying to achieve a sound of like turning the faucet on and off. Now you can hear the strokes. The idea is to get that to be just seamless in its sound. Now when I first started with the loose or coarse ground bounces, the sticks were pretty high. So the beginning phase of the rebound strokes is that it's very slower compared to right at the very end. You've all heard the peanut butter jar lid or mayonnaise jar lid fall off the counter. Wow, 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 
And what, what we want is that really tight sound. So one of the keys to getting a real nice coarse rebound is to hold the sticks very close to the surface so that you don't get that large bounce, but you get that real fine grain. So now I'm going to demonstrate this on the snare drum. And a couple of things to keep in mind is where you play it. On the center of the drum, the sound is going to be deeper, but it's a deader sound. I'm just going to tap the middle of the drum, now toward the edge. Quite a bit more ring. So the ring toward the edge of the drum is actually going to blend the sound together. It also bounces less in the center than toward the edge. So the additional rebound also makes the stick bouncier. So the ring and rebound all make the roll sound better. So I'm going to try and play a smooth buzz roll toward the center and then move it toward the edge. And you're going to hear how the roll begins to take on a smoother quality of tone and sound when I play toward the edge. And then I'll move it back toward the center so you can hear how it started. So here it is. <laughs> Now I kept my speed the same the whole time. Generally I can afford to roll a little slower toward the edge because of the additional rebound and tension, but when I get to the center because of the deader feel of the head and the deader sound, I need to roll a little faster to keep that roll having the same smooth quality as it did when I was toward the edge. So I'm going to try and adjust my speed a little. I can roll fast or slow. Really it depends on how comfortable I feel and what kind of an emotional effect. If it's really fast, it sounds more intense. But if you slow it down, in fact one of the things I like to do is see how slow I can roll. Okay, so generally toward the edge it's going to be smooth, the center not so smooth. I like to sometimes practice that sort of crescendo effect. I call it my ocean wave, where I start quietly and play slower and softer. And as I go to the louder center, I'm rolling faster and then I go back to what I started. So here's an example of that. Soft to loud to soft effect. <laughs> All right, so hopefully this has been some helpful information on how to achieve a multiple bounce stroke. You'll just have to experiment. So to recap, the four methods are hold the stick firmly with the thumb and index finger right at that sweet spot, the balance point or fulcrum where the flag is. Hold the stick close to the head. Squeeze firmly as you press down. And then finally, you just experiment with rotation and pressure till you get a very even sounding roll. So if you experiment with that, you'll get it. So stick around, and we're going to go through the double stroke roll next. Thanks for watching.